it's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... A Craig and Ryan Magic Review Show. He's Ryan. You're Craig. And welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. With Craig. And Ryan. We get there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep throwing you curveballs. Welcome back to another review show on Magic TV. Five new tricks this week. Five brand new tricks. We've got some good ones. We've got some not so good ones. But we're going to break everything down for you. And we're going to start off with a trick, a brand new trick by who I consider to be one of the best working magicians in the UK. If you're excited, then you should be. That's the first review and it's coming up right now. So first up, we have Comet by Andrew Dean. Now, if you don't know who Andrew Dean is, for a while, Andrew Dean and Joel Dickinson worked together on Real Secrets. And now... Um, they've kind of both got their own separate ways. And Andrew's first release since leaving Real Secrets is Comet. And Comet is I'm basically, it. it's a wallet. Yeah. It's a wallet. It's a wallet. And you can get it in black leather. Comet is a wallet. It's Comet is a wallet. You can get it in black leather. You can get it in brown leather. You can get the inside, the metal part, in either black, silver, gold, red, or blue. So there's silver. lots of options. We've got a black wallet in silver. And there is a lot built into Imagine this. Imagine if you got brown with gold. <laughs> yeah, that right. Would look cool. That would look cool. There's a lot built into yeah. this wallet, an awful lot, including many different ways of doing many different object to impossible locations. Now, whenever you bring out a wallet, it even uh, says comet. Yeah, it even says uh, yeah. comet. Where? There. Yeah. yeah. Where? Oh yeah, there. Yeah. Now, uh, every time you bring out a wallet, uh, the first thing that people ask is, "What's it like as a card to wallet?" And this is a really interesting card to wallet. That's not the only thing it does. It does an awful lot more, but it's got a very in interesting functionality as a card to wallet. And so that's what I'm going to actually show you right now. I'm going to perform a simple card to wallet routine so you can see how quick the load is and what makes if it I get different. One of these, I have so many magic wallets. You've got so many already. Um, but I'm going, to show, I'm going to do a performance to Ryan. So let's have a look at uh, the card to wallet using Comet. Okay, Ryan. I'm going to show you something with a pack of playing cards. Yeah. Do you want to shuffle or do you trust me? I don't trust you. Do you want to shuffle? Yeah. Go there. Go for it. Don't trust you. You cheat. I do cheat for a living. It's my job. Literally my job. My job is to lie, literally. Yeah, it is. And that's what magicians do. <laughs> they lie. Uh, anyway, you're going to take a card, but don't let me see it. I'm going to look away. Take a number card because you're going to write your name on it. Gina, I'm going to look away as well. I'm just going to take one card. Okay. I've got one card. You got it? Take it out? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. What do I do? Okay, you're going to write your name in it, okay. but be careful with this pen. You know why? Why? It's a little sharpie. It's a little... Forget it. <laughs> write the uh, name. Okay. Okay. Are we done? Nearly. 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 Normally, it doesn't take people that long to sign a card. Put the lid on the pen. Do you pair. get to see it? Do you get to see it? No, you can show the camera. Don't show me. Oh, yeah. Let me blow it. Are we good? Yep. Pop the card back there. It's kind of, it was, it was, hmm? an, it was, it was once in a, a more than one way. It was like, it was like a two-way thing. Okay, fair enough. But now well, it's not. Do me I a favour. I changed it. Very quickly, just shuffle that pack once. Make sure it's shuffled. Yep. Just once. Give him a shuffle. Once. Just one good shuffle. Just. Mm -hmm. What about one good cut? Well, you can. I tell you, you can give it one good shuffle into those as well. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, I you've also need. Sort of huh? You've already got it sorted for me. I need uh, my wallet as well. Yeah. I just got my wallet. Are we good? Mm. Mm hmm. So now I'm going to bet you. The contents of my wallet, I can find your card with one cut. Okay. Watch. Go on. Was that your card? No. Okay, what I meant is one cut and one shuffle. No. It's not signed. What I meant is three cuts. That's the same card. Wow. <laughs> what about one shuffle? Well, that's two shuffles. One shuffle. Three cuts. 
and another three cuts. Okay. Same card. Wow! <laughs> uh, it looks like I'm just going to struggle to find your card. I said I was going to give you the contents of my wallet, but what's interesting is I don't have money in my wallet. I don't have anything. Why do I don't have money? Well, because I have credit cards. Nobody carries money around these days. In fact, this is one of these fancy wallets. I keep my credit cards in there. And there's a little lever at the bottom. When you pull the lever, what happens is it pops the uh, the credit cards up. That's cool. Yeah, but what's really interesting is when I take my credit cards out, inside my credit cards, there's one folded up card. Right there in between my credit cards, there's one folded up card. You're not going to believe this. Take it out. Unfold it. And that is the one that's been Rylanded to death. Your card. No, it's been ride to death. Ride to death. <laughs> now, what's really interesting about that, Rye, is I love the fact that it goes into this section inside the wallet. Yeah. This is kind of that's a modern it. thing. I don't, know, I don't know how it works. Uh, really? It goes, uh, it goes into this section right here. And this is, this is, this is yes, this is Overdraft by Paul Fowler. Um, now, this here, uh, this section of the wallet is a very uh, modern thing. You see a lot of wallets now where they've got that thing where they push the credit cards forward. Uh, um, but what's really nice about it is when you put a couple of credit cards inside your wallet, um, and they can be real credit cards. I mean, I'm using Overdraft by Paul Fowler, but it can be a real credit card. Look at the gap you've got at the top there. It, look at how much of a gap you've got in between those two credit cards. So when that's inside your wallet, all you have to do is... Did you do the thing where you have it and then you not put it... Well, well Andrew Dean taught you how to do half a Mercury card fold because you don't have to fold it into quarters, just into halves. And the load is instantaneous. It goes in there straight away. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about this. I've got a... Uh, spare card. Oh, there you go. There's, there's that card from earlier. It literally, the problem with a lot of card to wallets for me, um, and I don't get this with Orphic, which is my favourite wallet, but a lot of wallets, the problem is getting it straight into the load chamber. This, oh, yeah. you're only using, like, that, first of all, it's very, very small. It's very, very micro, which is great. Fits in your back pocket. It's robust because of this metal section inside. But the, the, because of how it's made, the credit cards just stay in there. Imagine this is in your back pocket. It just, boom, it just goes in. Let me just show you. Let me just get it all set up. There you go. So, boom, it just goes in straight away like that. And once it's in there and you bring it out, it's done. And the nice thing is when you flip that lever, it brings up the credit cards like that. And that becomes even more impossible. And then you grab it and you yeah, see. I think that's it. even more. Yeah, it's a different one. But th I think that's even more yeah, impossible like than going into like a zippered compartment or something like that. I know it did. Um, I really like that. Like, really, really like that. I think that's great. And the other thing that I I've been... I want a brown and gold one. Oh, do you? Well, I'm sure that we can uh, sort one out. Is that yours? Yes, this is mine, but I'll get you brown and gold one. Now, the other thing that I've thought is quite interesting about this, uh, and Andrew never covered this, but... That's, um, I think that might be my new wallet. It's great, isn't it? Because they... it's, it's a little logging chamber and it's got space to put all your other things. It has, and I'll actually show you something else in a second that's really but is, cool. Is, is, it, is uh, it like not just a loading chamber and it's got other things with it? It's got other things with it, which I'm going to go through in a minute. But one thing that I uh, kind of have been playing around with is if you have the wallet in full view on the table the whole time, it's very, very easy to have this card, uh, half a card palmed. Even people with little hands could do that because it's half the size. Okay. And then literally, uh, with the right misdirection, you can just load it straight into the loading chamber as you put that to one side. Which means that then later, boom, when you pull on the lever, the cards come out. And when the cards come out, in between the cards. And you can have two or three credit cards in there. It's completely up to you. So that's the, uh, one feature that I love. And um, that's really, really good. Now, the second feature is this. What if you, this is... this, what if you had, like, um, what if you took, like, other things that were flat? Like, could you, could you fit a ring in there? Like, not well, in no, you couldn't. But I tell you what, I was just about to come to that. Could you use that? This section, no, but <laughs> this section right here, this section right here is designed for a ring or a coin to sealed envelope in wallet. Because there is another load right here and you take a special uh, envelope and the envelope just fits inside there. 
So the whole idea is this is in this is in your pocket like this, and and uh, it's got a guide oh. built into it. So this could even be here like this. And at the end of your ring and string routine, you just literally pull it out like this, and you point out that in this section there's an envelope, a sealed envelope. You take the sealed envelope out. Oh yeah. You hand it to them. Because if you have a split in the side of the envelope, wasn't it? it? Well, it's a split at the top with a guide in it with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic sort oh, yeah, of... Cause, yeah, because, like, um, you can get the ones where it's, like, a long... Sealable, like, yeah. Yeah, because it's long, like, that way, and the, li and the, like, top's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was thinking, like, if you had one that, like, this way, and, like, the top's... The top side, the, one of them. You can have it opened at the side, so it's like it's like proper. Sealed. No, but the nice thing about this, this is proper sealed because it's 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 created in such a way that when you take it out, it automatically uh, uh, seals. Oh. So you can literally give that envelope. So imagine you have this in your pocket. You would borrow a ring. You make it vanish. You go into your pocket. You bring this out. You point out there's an envelope there. It's been there the whole time. You take the envelope out. You give it them, and when they open up the envelope, inside there is their borrowed ring. Now, and the nice thing is you don't have to buy replacements because on the project, Andrew Dean has PDFs and instructions. You can print out a load of guides and make your own wallets. So you can print out an A4, sorry, not your, your own envelope. So you can print out an A4 paper, a load, of, a load of these templates, and then you just cut them out one night. You spend about an hour or two making these envelopes, and then once you've made yeah, them... Yeah, I want a banner go with lots of envelopes. <laughs> well, That's you can make the envelopes yourself. You just And then this thing here is designed yeah. for a peak. So you put your business cards in there, uh, so you can have somebody think of something, put it away inside there with well, the rest well, of your well, business well. cards. It just goes in there. You'd keep your business cards in there. Yeah. Or maybe another credit card, but you keep your How business you cards in there. And then it goes in there like that, like that. And then all you have to do is, as you're talking, look at how good this is. So as you're, as you're talking, that's the peak. You've got it immediately. Oh, my God. I know, it's great. So there is a yeah, lot... Yeah, this is my new one. Yeah. But, but brown and gold. Brown and gold. Uh, there's a lot built into this. I love this. And I'm going to have loads of envelopes in my pocket, so I'll just take one out, load it in. And I'm like, yeah. Right, we've got to see a trick. Well, I've got well, three don't... to show you. Yeah. <laughs> you Just don't using even... this one thing. <laughs> and you can then put your uh, your overdraft or something in there as well, and then you're um, you're good to go. Yeah, because so, was, 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 was the overdraft over there? No, there's another one over there. Oh, yeah. Cause and there's one in my office as well. There. Yeah, we, we love overdraft. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what Comet is. There is an awful lot that you can do with this. It's really... And I love the fact that it's so small, it's robust... It fits into any pocket. I think I think I know the main one people would pick. What's that? Black and black. Black and black. I think so. Yeah, probably. Because it's you. You people would be wondering. So, what's this silver thing in here? No, I think that it, it's quite a nice feature that that yeah, silver thing is there. Like modern now. Yeah, it's like yeah. boom. Look, I keep I keep my credit cards in there. Badoom. I like that. Oh, and in um, my credit cards, they've been in here the whole. Everybody time. knows that my favourite wallet is the Orphic wallet, uh, and. I I'm gonna I'm gonna try this out. This mu this has a chance of beating the Orphic wallet. I love this. I think that there's so much functionality built it into this. I love the I fact. Yeah, I love the fact that I can do ringing envelope in this section, and I can do card in wallet, and I can do a peak. I can do everything, and it's built into this. It reminds me of a Nexus, but even better. Um, so I love it. I'm going to give it, yeah, the old one, yeah, yeah Javier's wallet. I'm going to give this 99%. I think this is brilliant. I'm definitely going to use it. Uh, it might even become my regular wallet. And it's got spaces for money. And yeah, it has. And yeah. Yes, it does. Spaces That's for the other actual thing. It's got money, yeah, and or other cards. Like me, because well. I've got no credit cards. Because I'm tiny. I'm you little. Tiny. So I'm, you not, just, I'm not adult. So you just I'm, have, not, I'm not adult. I'm a kid. So you have lots of money that you carry around with you instead. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give this 99%. What are you giving it? 100. 100%. 100% from First Ireland. Trick. First, trick. First trick. 99% from me. 100% from Ireland. This is amazing. Yep. Love this. Highly recommended. Brilliant trick. Andrew, my, yeah, this is <laughs> from me and Ryland. You are a god of close-up magic workers. Let's move on. So next up, you have Name It by Adrian Vega. Uh, Name It by Adrian Vega. This is uh, his version of Phil or Phil Plus. Uh, if you don't know what Phil or Phil Plus is, the idea is that you have someone name a card and you tell them that uh, you name their card right from the very beginning. You show them uh, a name and then you show them that the card that they picked is the only one with the uh, with the name on it. Yeah. Uh, really cool. One. Really, really cool. Now, if you've not... Um, 
I have thoughts on this and I'm going to go through the thoughts in a minute. Uh, but first of all, let's have a look at a performance of it. So Ryland is going to perform this to me so you can see exactly how it looks. And then after the performance... What if their name is now? Oh, that'd be even weirder, right? So let's have a look at a performance and then we'll talk about what we think. I'm going to show you a really cool trick. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it involves this prediction, yeah, and this card. There's more than one card. I mean, this pack of cards. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold your hand out in a fist. And you're going to put um, any number of fingers up that you want. When? Now. Okay. So you've got those two fingers, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Two fingers. <laughs> yeah. So those two fingers. So you want the two. Now, you've got reds or black. Which one? Reds. Reds. And would you like the hearts or diamonds? Hearts. So you've got the two of hearts. Yes. Yeah. Now, we've got Do I need to keep my fingers up? No. Okay. So I've got this prediction, yeah? Now, would it be cool if I named your card in this prediction? That would be incredible. Yes. I named your card... I named your card Matt. What? I, look, I named your card. I named it Matt. I don't understand. Your card is Matt. I don't understand. Oh. If you don't understand, I'll show you what the pack of cards is then. The pack of cards is to explain. So all the, you see all these cards, you see um, they've got different names on it. You can see this one has Lloyd, this one's got Colin... This one's got Re Re Rebecca. Rebecca. This one's got uh, Craig. That's me. This one's Liz. This one's Jane. This one's Sam. This one's Caleb. Caleb. So there's a bunch of different ones, yeah? Mm hmm. So let's look at the two of hearts. Let's look for the two of hearts. The two of hearts. Here. Mm hmm. This is the two of hearts. Yes, it is. Now. Let's look at what your card has on the back. Your card on the back actually has one word. Do you want to know what that name is? What? Matt! Matt. You did name my card. What? Well, let's talk about the uh, the positives of this, Ryan, because, I mean, that was a great performance, and, and there's a lot of positives. So, first of all, it's an instant reset. Um, second of all, it's incredibly easy to do. You can do it within a few seconds. Um, and you've got a very nice display, both at the beginning and at the end, where you're showing that apparently all the cards are there, yeah. and you're showing that uh, all of the cards have a different name written on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to love about this from that point of view. Um, however, there is, in my opinion, a glaring negative with this. And this is based off the fact that I have performed this plot for years, uh, Cody Fisher's name deck is something that I've done in my cabaret show. Um, also, you've got uh, you, you've got um, Phil Plus, the original Phil and Phil Plus, mm. which obviously has a free choice of any card, which is great. I've even created my own version of this called Lloyd, um, which really? I put on my Vanishing Ink Masterclass. Yeah, so. Um, Why do you call it Lloyd? Because the whole idea was, at the end, they pick... So with my version, I put a prediction card down on the table. I said I was going to get back to that. I have somebody uh, cut to a card randomly and look at the card. Yeah. And I have somebody else name one of the names on the back. And I show that they're all different. So they name a name. And when they do, I show it's the card that they picked, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. And then you say to the second person, but this time I want you to pick any card. So they pick any card. And when you turn it over, it says Lloyd on the back. And your prediction that you put down at the beginning was Lloyd. So oh, there was a, okay. lo a lot going on with that. A lot going on with it. And it was on my Vanishing Ink Masterclass. Um, and it's also on the Netflix. Now, the reason that um, I bring that up is because I know this plot very, very well. And my big negative with this that I think, to be honest, makes this not really something that I would do. And as far as I'm concerned, a very substandard version of this trick is the fact that it is such a convoluted way of having them name a card. Um, with Phil Plus, you can have them name any card. And there is no force. You can literally just say, name a card. Oh, you want that one? And you can show that that card has the name on it that you predicted. Likewise, with Cody's version, you can have them name any card. Um, with my version, the second phase, you can have them name any card. Uh, but with this version, you have to kind of say, right, okay, so we're going to have you name a card, hold your hand in a fist, now hold up so many fingers. I just think that that's a very weak way of having somebody pick a card. Anybody with half a brain will go, well, hang on a minute, 
you're kind of limiting my choices to five cards there because I've only got five fingers on that hand. You're eliminating the sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings. You're eliminating a lot of cards. And I think it just telegraphs the fact that that must be part of the method. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, that would, be, if there was never a version like this before, and this is the first version of like that Phil Plus style plot, you'd go, okay, but it's a really cool effect. But as it is, there's lots of different versions of this, including the original, that you can literally name any card. Yeah. But with this, you have to kind of have that r procedure that limits their choice. And I just don't like that at all. Um, and, and, you know, you might I be thinking... I don't really like that either. Yeah, and you might be thinking, well, okay, but, you know, Phil Plus is a gimmick deck. Well, this is a gimmick deck. And you're thinking, well, yeah, well, Phil Plus has cards that you can't even really examine. But No, but you can't examine this deck. This is a fully gimmick deck. Yeah. There's cards that maybe aren't as gimmicked as others, but the entire deck is gimmicked in one way or another. Um, so if you're going to have two gimmick decks, why not go for the one where you get a free choice of card? Or why not go... Uh, for Cody's, where there's no gimmick deck. You've just got one gimmick card in there and it works on stage up to a bunch of people. Or my version, or whatever. I just I just don't think this is very good. I think it's okay. Um, and it's self-working and that's great. And, you know, it's easy to do and it's an instant reset and it ticks a lot of boxes. But I just think it's massively weakened by the fact that the procedure is so rubbish when you have them name the card at the very beginning. I just think yeah. it's, I just, I, I kind of think it sucks. Now, I haven't spoken to you about this because you obviously learned this to perform it, but what do you think? I think I would rather do uh, the other versions. Yeah? Because it's a lot better. Because well, they're a lot better, yeah. The, 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 the problem, do you, do you see what I mean about having them name a yeah, card and yeah. saying, hold your hand up, hold out some of the fingers? I did actually think that because you said, right, I've got your hand name, uh, one to five, and you're like, oh, I'll go, I, I hold up one, and you're like, oh, okay, so that means ace. And I'm like, why doesn't that mean 11 as well? It just, it just means ace. And then so uh, what he did is he, um, he took the cards and he showed them me. And I'm like, and once he showed, that, um, once he showed that me that uh, the ace was like, um, had Matt on the back, I was like, but you only limited me to um, 20 cards. Yeah, fifty-two. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm going to give this thirty percent. I think this is kind of weak, to be honest. I, 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 there's far better ways of accomplishing what, you this. You don't trick. even let me have half of the deck. No. And anybody who don't, that, that, the thing is, let's not kid ourselves. Lay people aren't stupid. I think sometimes we we treat them as more stupid than they actually are. Sitting they're actually they're yeah, they're very intelligent. They're not they're not. Lay people, yeah. the people yeah. you're performing for, they will sit there and they will try and work that trick out. And and, and all it takes is some, all it takes is somebody with half a brain to go, hang on a minute. I only had a choice of really one to five. Oh, that must have something to do with the trick. And then you've devalued the whole thing. I just think if you're going to limit people's choices, a better way to do this, yeah. if you're going to and limit go, people's oh, choices. Oh, it's got nothing to do with that. And they say, oh, show me the trick again then. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Um, Put your hand out with those, and he's like, well, you're not giving me the choice. And uh, if I was going to limit somebody's choice, a better way to do that would be to go uh, picture card or number card and use Equivo. Yeah. You know, we're going to start off by uh, removing yeah, the like picture. the picture cards or the number cards? Yeah, numbers. Numbers. Okay, so uh, we'll throw the picture cards away. Now we've got the um, high cards and low cards. Yeah, exa exactly. You yeah. can go there, yeah. Okay, that. Um, that route. Yeah, 30% <laughs> for me. What are you giving it? 20%. 20% from Ryan and 30% from me. It's very uninspiring and uh, it doesn't really I just add... realised that's how many cards it limits you to. Good point. Uh, it's very uninspiring. It doesn't really add anything to the plot. So it's not very good. Okay, so uh, one of my favourite magicians of all time is Dominic Duivia and he's released many tricks over the years. And this is a trick that has recently been re-released. Now I'm looking at the back of the packaging and it says 2017. Um, Dominic Duivia and Mayette Magic. Um, but it's only just recently come back out again. It's only just recently hit the uh, so the magic yeah. shelves. Yeah, that's, that's very short for me. And, and uh, Dominic's book was incredible. And I think he's responsible for so many 
awesome tricks in magic, including his original printing routine, which for me was better than Presto Printo by Daryl. Uh, and what we have here, I've never seen the reverse yeah, card before. Of course. I've never seen the reverse card before, never seen it, didn't know what it was. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it until you've watched the performance. So this is a performance of the advanced version of reversed card. Ready? Right, and I'm going to show you something with four nines. And they're actually, uh, they're all the nine of hearts. Okay. They've actually got something in common. First of all, they're all, uh, they're all nine of hearts. And the second thing that they've, uh, they've got in common is as well as all being the nine of hearts, they're all uh, uh, blue-backed. So you've got four blue-backed nine of hearts. Okay. And I have to use nine of hearts for this trick. It doesn't work with anything else other than nine of hearts. It's weird like that. But this one here is the leader nine. Okay. And these are the followers. How do you know which one's the leader? Because I'm clever. Okay. Now watch. If I take this nine of hearts, yeah? Yeah. And I put it on top of the leader nine of hearts and I do that. Do you know what happens? What? The, the pip off the center of the nine of hearts prints itself on the back of that nine. That's cool. It is cool, but you've got to be careful when you do this that you don't accidentally scratch the card. See, if I do that again, what happens is I can actually print that nine. But if I give it a good scratch, what happens is we end up scratching the whole card. You don't want that. And and the problem is, you never want to scratch the whole thing before you do the print. Because if you scratch the, thing, the whole thing before you do the print, you've got a massive scratch. Now, you can't see it until... The magic happens and then you've wrecked your card basically so you want to be oh, very no. very careful when you're doing this but yeah that's uh that's why i use nine of hearts because it's the only card in the deck that you can actually use to do this that's cool so that's the ver that's the advanced version of the reverse card now what's advanced about it is that um uh the second version which is the one i just did uses an elmsley count so you can show the four nines at the beginning the original version you just spread the first couple of cards out. You, you can't show the faces of all of the cards. But with this version, you can. So it kind of adds to it a little bit. Uh, I've got to be honest, I don't like this trick at all. I really, really, really don't like it. And it upsets me to say that because I'm a big Dominic Duivia fan. Uh, but I think that this is kind of like a really crap, rubbish version of his printing routine. I think his print, printing routine is fantastic. What we have here is a four card version of the printing routine, but it doesn't even make any sense. Now, I don't know if it's lost in translation because obviously Dominic's speaking French with very sporadic uh, English subtitles. So I don't know if it's kind of lost in translation or something, but it doesn't even make much sense. There's nothing to do with the reversed card. You know, you bring four nines out and one at a time you print parts of the nines onto the backs of the other cards. But you never show the backs of the other cards. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that just kind of is a bit rubbish for me. And the cards can't be examined because once you've done the printing, oh, the final card... Show, like, a little bit of it. Yeah, the final card, when you, uh, when you print the big scratch on there, that can't be examined. Whilst with the original oh, printing yeah, routine, and everything could be examined. With Presto Printo, when you finish Presto Printo, that can all be examined. With this, you've got a four card version which I, ju I just i just really don't like it i just yeah. don't like it compared to other versions one of which is dominic's own routine that in my opinion are much better than what i'm seeing here this is kind of like a a very substandard average packet trick um that that, that isn't very magical if you actually think about it you show the faces of the cards, and only because I'm doing the advanced handling can you see the faces of all of the cards. You then show the backs of all of the cards, but not all of the backs. You just show part of the backs. Then you put the cards out on the table, and you print a heart onto a back, but you never showed the back in the first place anyway. Then you print a scratch onto the back. You never showed the back of that card anyway. And then the final one, you are making that scratch appear, but now that card can't be examined. It's just not very good. It's, it's just... Very uninspiring yeah. and very rubbish. What do you think of it? I don't think it's very good either. You don't know, now you can't was, was there a live performance on the thing? No. It was like a ten it was like a seven minute tutorial. Did it explain it properly? Oh yeah, it's Dominic Duvia. He knows how to explain tricks, but it was a seven minute thing. He explained it very, very quickly. As I say, I might have the presentation lost in translation because he's French. And it was English subtitles, so maybe that was lost in translation, I don't know. Oh. But I have no idea why it was even called Reverse Card, to be honest. Uh, I'm giving this, uh, it's another one I'm giving 30% to. It's very uninspiring, it's not I'm very good. I'm giving this 25%. 25% from Ryan and 30% from me. Uh, you know, you can get for less, less, less than the cost of this, you can go and pick up Daryl's Presto Printo, 
which is like a million times better. So, you know, go, if you're into a printing routine where you're doing this funky style stuff, look at Presto Printo instead of this, or look at Clones by Daryl, or any did version. Preston, was it Presto Nami did he do one? No, no he didn't. Uh, I uh, published a version of it in Whitewash, which you can get from RSVP online, Russ Stevens uh, company. I kind of did. Oh, you did, yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about uh, Wild Cubes? Yeah. Yeah. Which is officially getting released in the summer. Yeah, you're going to have to do a live launch for it. Very exciting. Anyway, um, yeah, 25% uh, from Ryan and... Uh, uh, no, 25% did you say? Yeah, 25% from Ryan and 30% from me. It's another average trick. But don't worry, because Ryan's here to save the day with something that's not terrible. So next up... Okay, thanks. Next up, we have from Murphy's Magic and Wonder Makers... We have Haze. Now, Haze came out a couple of weeks ago now, a few weeks ago. New product, Haze by Wondermakers. This is the first smoke machine for magicians that can be handed to the viewer. It can be used with any deck of cards, can be handed to the viewer, excellent for TV shows and media content, makes any card routine more effective, enough battery capacity for 50 impressions, 25 minutes to full charge, work without a remote control, vibration signal at the beginning of the work. So they're yeah, being, that's ve true. They're being very that's, honest that's, about that. That's this. how you can tell, because when you when you uh, do the thing, it gives you a vibration, so it goes bzz, bzz, and then the smoke comes out, so, so you know it's coming out. Absolutely. Now, uh, we're going to get Ryan into the, you did this on Instagram a little while ago, yeah. didn't you? So we're going to get uh, a video here Rylan doing this on Instagram so you can see exactly uh, what it looks like and then once uh, you've had a look at that Instagram video we'll talk about the pros and the cons. So first of all, um, the, 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 the gimmick comes with the ability to kind of uh, make it into whatever back design you want to. Yeah. Uh, so you can stick whatever back, you used a red back but rider deck, red. but you could use literally any card that you wanted to. So that's the first thing that's really cool. It's adaptable to any performance. The actual haze gimmick, when it's all made together, um, it makes about, it's about maybe two thirds of a deck of cards slightly under two thirds of a deck of cards. So you've got, you put a whole bunch of regular cards on top and you've got this gimmick, but it is, uh, what you do with it is limited. You could probably work out an ambitious card. You could work out an ambitious card. You could work yeah. out a few different routines with it, but you only have a like about a third of the deck to deal with, with regular cards, okay? So you can bear that in mind. Uh, but that allows you to shuffle the cards, it allows you to cut the cards, it allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff. You can force the cards, you can do a very good dribble force. When Ryland performed it on Instagram, because he was doing it to camera, he just cut and he just showed a card. Yeah, but, I don't even know where that card goes anymore. Yeah, but you could if you wanted to, like do a dribble force or something yeah, like that. Go, um, uh, it's very reliable. We've played around with it. It's yeah. true what it says. It's very quick to it load up. Exactly what that there says. is a button in the middle of the deck, and you squeeze the yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah. So you, all you need to do is press the um, the little. Like, it's like I guess it's kind of like a clock. Yeah. Sort of thing. It's like a clock. So like the tiny little circle with the two sticks pointing off it. Um, when you press that, you get it. And the smoke will come out straight away. And even though there's a vibration, it's completely silent. You can't hear anything. Uh, there's holes in the side and in the back of the deck. So it comes out the side and the back. But people can look all around the outside of the deck and it looks completely normal. Yeah, because if you look, because I'm left-handed, I, I hold it in a different way. When you're right-handed, you can hold it and you can't see anything. You can literally show it like that. Yeah. But when I do it, do it. yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, the one thing I'd take exception to is what they said here, which is, um, enough battery capacity for at least 50 performances. Now that's true. 
However, you bit of, it's a bit of a con. Yeah, because what you get with it is you get some liquid. A little liquid. And you a pour the wine. liquid onto the wick inside the unit. When you pour the liquid in there, it's enough for about four performances. After four performances, yeah, after four performances, you're not going to get that much smoke out. So even though you can use it for 50 performances, if you're using this in a gig and you're using it quite regularly, every uh, four uh, performances, uh, you're going to have to go to one side and squidge some more water in there. At, at, at uh, 50 performances, it'll probably just be like press. It wouldn't work, yeah. Yeah, you'll just get this. A little tiny hair of smoke, it'll just come out. Yeah, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't look great. So although it's true what it says, 50 performances from the battery, it's only four performances before you have to refill with really, more, it's two with or more three. liquid. You can yeah. get four out of it. Yeah, two, four or th good ones. two, three, four. Yeah. Um, there's no live performances on the tutorial. What it's all, shame. I know, it's all done to camera, really hyper close up. But they teach you how to do the routine that Ryland did, which makes sense where the card gets burnt. They also teach you how to do a really cool rising card using a very old gimmick that Stephen Tucker uh, first put out called the Lazarus deck many, many years ago. And they've adapted that uh, in order to do this cool rising card with smoke coming out. So they hold the box, the cards go in the box. And the cards come out, and the card rises out the box with all of the smoke coming out, uh, which looks really cool. Uh, there's a few different ways of using it, uh, and I think you'll be uh, you'll come up with your own ways of doing it. If you want to, it's it's probably one of the best smoke devices I've seen. Um, my favourite smoke device is your close-up pad that you use, but really oh, yeah, yeah. you have to use that oh, oh, in I a forgot, stage performance. Was it teeth? Was it no? Bacon magic. Ah, oh, that was it. But you have to use but that. I've got a cool magic one from them. It's like a nice wooden magic one. Yeah, it's a beautiful magic one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that, look, if you're wanting to do this, bear in mind you're not going to be able to do all oh, the card routines thought, that you would with a regular deck. You could do that close up pad by Baker Magic and this together. Mm -hmm. So it comes out the. So you're doing it on that close up pad. It comes out the close up pad and uh, the um, and the card box. So you're like holding the card box over here. And you, no, you put your card box down and you go like this. So you press it and then smoke comes out the card box and then straight after it's come out the card box, so smoke rises and then smoke comes out this close-up pad too. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Put, the, put these two together. Love it. Um, Haze is good. But I, love, I love Haze. I think I'm it's really it good. I'm going to give it 98%. 98%. I'm going to give it 89%. I think it's really good. Uh, if you're looking to include smoke in your act. I thought you weren't going to do it then. No, no, no I really like it. 89 89%. 89%. I think it's really good. Um, bearing in mind that if you need, uh, that, that, that you're not going to be able to do all the normal card tricks that you would do because two thirds of your deck are being made up by this gimmick. As long as you bear that in mind, you'll be absolutely fine. But easily, you'd be able to work out ambitious card you'll be able to take like four aces out and do uh you know a whole bunch of different routines but it's something to bear in mind so yeah 89 percent from me 98 percent from ryland we're going to wrap this up with one final trick so we're back with n2g and we're back with n10 can you believe we've now reviewed 10 of these bloody things actually um, 10 there's more because remember oh yeah there's there was, rbg and there's, prs and, yeah there was the end rainbow thingy yeah there's a whole bunch of them really isn't there and then the hopping halves one uh this is n10 uh isn't which RPG? means that you're going to have two things you're going to have really nicely made chinese coins and you're going to have the worst tutorial in the entire history uh, of magic yeah. uh Not which is NTG's which is crap tutorials. really really crap tutorials like their tutorials are just so bad I want to literally rip Are they my still eyes in that? out. Have they just rented a hotel again? Yeah, they're still in the hotel. Um, still in the hotel. Uh, yeah. But you know what? I mean, uh, this is slightly better because they're actually speaking and they're making a little bit more of an oh, effort. They're speaking. Yeah, they're oh speaking. Oh my god! What an accomplishment! I know, but it's still only a seven-minute tutorial with no live performances, with a oh. camera just basically pointed to the guy's crotch the entire time. Yeah. Um, so what's this one? Well, uh, Ryland did this on Instagram a little while ago, so I'm going to let you see the video that Ryland did for Instagram. That will give you an idea of exactly what this is. Let's have a look at Ryland's Instagram performance, and then uh, we'll talk about the pros and cons. Yeah.
So you really like this, don't you? Yeah, um, I think it's really good, yeah. Yeah. Now, let me explain a couple of things and about this. And so the thing is, we didn't actually use this shell, but it comes with a, it comes with a really nice Chinese shell. Yeah, so it comes with a gimmicked coin where uh, you've got like the, uh, the, the, the mini Chinese coin almost like painted on the, chi on the big Chinese coin. Yeah, it's no credit to... No credit to Fusion by uh, by uh, oh, yeah, Fusion. Michael uh, yeah. Michael Rubenstein, but you know whatever. Uh, you also get uh, the little red Chinese coin. You also get a regular Chinese coin, and you get a shell. a shell. Now the reason you get a shell is because the first handling and the main handling on the project uses um, a, shell. a shell, and it actually uses Silent Assassin. Now Silent Assassin, oh. I did a I did a I, I did a yeah, well, basically, I did a, um, a Hidden Gems on it a little while ago. It has a, um, it's like a Sonata gimmick, but for one finger, and it's got a really powerful magnet in there. So you can slip it on when you need it, take it off when you don't. And what that allows you to do is put the shell onto the coin, put the coin onto that coin, so you line it up with where it's actually meant to be. You'd have your silent assassin, and you'd just come over and you'd tap it, and as you do, it just like, boom, almost looks like it actually goes on there. So it's a really nice handling, but I mean, you need a silent assassin to do that. They then teach you a couple of ways of doing it without a silent assassin, one of which using a shell, one of which doesn't use a shell. Neither of the handlings are the ones that Rhinan did. Rhinan came up with his own handling for this, uh, using uh, the pinch method. Uh, the, the thing is, the shell, by the way, is not magnetic. However, they have included a magnet and they give you instructions on how to actually fix this into the shell so you can make the shell magnetic as well. So, oh, you can I just, so what if you painted that like a pale? Yeah. Like a pale. And then you have the shell. Oh, no, it's not the shell. The shell, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you put it in the shell. And that, look at look at the size there. So if you have it in there. So a little bit like a Chinese hand half. Yeah, you yeah, can do it looks that. looks like it's in your hand. Yeah. And then, obviously, you wouldn't get all the coin in. You'll just get like that, but that's, that. I mean, that's perfectly fine. As long as you can, like, pick it up like that, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like your idea of just having it on there, and they can see it's on there, you know, and they can they can see it's on there, and then you just go, boom, and, and it actually, uh, you know, like, almost prints itself on there. It's nice. I wouldn't do it, I'll be honest with you. You said you were going to do it. Um, I'm going to do it because I think it's really cool. Yeah, it is really nice. It's very easy as well. It's just one switch and you're good to go. You know, like I say, it's a seven minute tutorial, but there's going to be a handling in there that, that suits you. Um, it comes in a nice little presentation box. I'm definitely not going to do it, but Ryan it is. That's why I'm giving it over to him. Um, I'm going to give it like, it's all right. It's kind of very, it's over very quickly. It's one moment of magic. I like multi-phase routines. I like long, um, don't say it. I like Bobby. long. I like long <laughs> coin routines with multi-phases. Ryland's more of the kind of the hit and run style. You like doing like, like boom, one phase, done, right, move on. Um, so I can see why this would appeal to you. For me, not so much. I'm going to give it 70%. What about you? No, give it 95. 95? Yeah. Wow, you really like that. Yeah, uh, so 95% from Ryland, 70% uh, from me. It, it is also, what it is. You, put, um, you know, you could put that magnet in there. Yeah. You could have a silver dollar. So it's like a, uh, it's like a copper silver, but with uh, Chinese silver. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I'm just thinking of ideas here. Good idea. Um, yeah, play around with it. See what you yeah, can do. See what you um, can. I, I, I. It's if you like, if you like, if you like doing tricks with Chinese coins. And if you've already got an NTG trick that you do that you really like, then why would you not like want to? Like you, do? RBG. Yeah. Um, so it is RBG. For it is RBG. Yeah. That's the one I really like. So, yeah, it's uh, it's all right. 70% for me, 95% from my land. Let's wrap this up. There's no visa in back. There's no visa in back. There's no visa in back. And these are tricks. These are tricks. <laughs> these are the tricks that these we looked tricks. at this week. Reverse tricks. card. Not very good. Haze. Good. Name it. Not very good. Comet. Good. No, that's amazing. Amazing. And N2G. Eh, it's kind of yeah, it's, all right, it's, all right. it's all right. So it kind of goes this. This order, I think. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's
that's it, yeah. Anyway, thank you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. I'm use this for now. Okay. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to subscribe to Ryland, he's got almost 18,000 subscribers on uh, Instagram. To. You don't have to. No, but if you do want to, it's Ryland the Kid Magician on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and um, are you on any other platforms? Are you going to go and uh, are you going to go and try the new one for Instagram? There's a new one, strings or something like that. Yeah. Can yeah. you give that a go? Yeah. Strings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, follow him. Is he going to be like Facebook where people are really tough, or or, or do they just they just do, or do they just do this? Follow, 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 follow. I have no idea. I have no idea. It's like it's like Twitter. It's like Twitter. Follow, 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 follow. Save me. Send help. <laughs> Thanks very much Why for watching. Go and check out the uh, Netflix by going to www.thenetrix.com And uh, I will see you again next week with Ryland right here on another Craven Ryland review show. Thanks very much for watching. See you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Easy tricks. Easy credit cards. Bye.